My mom decided to, um, she got her tubes tied. And then two years later, she found out she was pregnant with me. And here I am. My mom lost her mom before I was one. And so I had to go stay with my aunt and my uncle. I stayed there until I was four years old and my uncle had passed away. And my aunt went to prison, so I ended up having to go back to my mom's house until the funeral. Due to circumstances beyond their control, six-year-old Brittany and her brother went to live with their biological father, who neither of them had ever met. He made us unload the trailer and uh, unpack everything. So I unpacked all the stuff and my brother was told to go outside and play football with the neighbors and go make new friends. And as I was unpacking the bags and stuff for a while, I was hungry and got thirsty, so I went into the kitchen and asked my dad if there was anything to eat or drink. He said, I'm sorry, kid, I'm not used to having kids around. Um, all that's here is beer and water, and the water was getting cleaned at the time, so I didn't want any of that. So I drank my first beer, and then he said, hey, do you want to know what the purpose of a woman is? And I said yes, I was going to grow up one day. He said, um, okay, here, smoke this, and he gave me his cigarette, so I smoked a cigarette while he went and locked the door. He asked me to come into the bedroom, and he proceeded to molest and rape me, and when he was done, he told me to go clean up and get ready to cook and clean and learn more. I don't want to learn anymore. The sexual abuse was repeated daily over the next six years. He said that um, if I told a single soul, he would kill my mom and the rest of my family on my mama's side. And I didn't want that to happen, so I kept it to myself. Fortunately, when Brittany was 12, her aunt was released from prison and took the necessary steps to rescue Brittany from her father's house. I stayed with the drugs and the alcohol and cigarettes and I um, was still sleeping with guys on the side. I was a workaholic. One night, Brittany was headed to a party, but she pulled into a church parking lot instead. And so I finished my cigarette and I went in. And whenever I came into the church building, I just felt an overwhelming presence. That night, Brittany responded to the Holy Spirit and went to the altar and surrendered her life to God. I just really wanted God to intervene in my life and change the lifestyle that I was living to glorify Him. After the service, Brittany met a friend and two others who happened to be at the church that night. One of them was Chris Pollock, the man she would eventually marry. So one day, me and Chris were talking on the phone and we decided that we were going to study the scriptures together and we were reading about forgiveness and I realized that um, I had to forgive people in my life in order for Christ to forgive me and that's what made me call my real dad and forgive my father. But now looking back, I can see where God had intervened in my life from my aunt coming and uh, rescuing me with legal papers from my dad's house and then uh, when I fully surrendered into Christ um, he had sent me my husband that I'm now married to and now I have a family and of my own and I make sure that we're not doing all the worldly stuff that we can glorify him in all we do from our home to ourselves to our the child everything is all to glorify him.